Over the last nine years, this site has gone from a site of recovery with over two million pieces of steel debris recovered to now where it is, which is less than, you know, less than 500 days away from opening the memorial to the world. Do you think you're going to make it in time, 500 days? I think we're going to make it. I mean, every single person, the thousands of workers that are on the site every day are working specifically toward that goal to open a memorial that we're all proud of on the 10th. So I think we'll make it. The, the part that you're focused on, you have a very specific, you have a very sacred mission, getting the memorial up and running. How big of a responsibility is that? It's a huge responsibility. I mean, almost 3,000 people died on that day. And, and one thing that people often forget is that 1,100 of the victims were never identified. The, the, the crushing force of collapse, those families never got human remains back. So we know that this site, for that reason and for the reason of what happened here, this is a sacred site. So we have a responsibility to the, the victims' families um, to do this right, to do it in a way that's respectful. Um, but even as more important at some level is that this is a place where the entire world is going to come to pay their respects. Everything west of where we're standing right now um, is the memorial site. Uh, it's, it's eight of the 16 acres, so 50% of the entire site is for the memorial and museum. The memorial pools sit in the very footprints where the Twin Towers stood, and they're an acre in size, will be the largest man-made waterfalls in the country in the very spot where the building stood. This is amazing. I mean, standing this close to where the tower was, you can envision where the tower stood just by looking here. Absolutely. You know, 50,000 people worked in the World Trade Center every day, and it was a place that people was, was drawn to. So to be here on the spot with this building stood right here um, is something that is going to have a large impact on all our visitors. You're in uh, the South Pole right now. There's uh, the North one and the South one, where the towers stood. I really wanted to create a quiet place for reflection. If you think about a moment of silence cutting through the noise, I really tried to create the built equivalent of a moment of silence. So the water will stream down Definitely. and then collect here in this it area or? arcs out as it falls. Our weir is actually angled at a 45 degree angle. So you have to imagine like these streams, almost like a stream coming out of a garden hose right. on one and a half inch centers. So many individual streams coming over that wall and kind of arcing out. So by the time that they splash down here into this reflecting pool, right. they're about four to six feet away from the surface of the wall. And then that water disappears into that void in the middle of each right. And it just looks as if that water is streaming into this bottomless right. uh, abyss. It and doesn't it doesn't fill up. It never, a... yeah. Right. We have thousands and thousands of gallons streaming in here every minute. And, but this emptiness remains. So we're going how many stories down, basically, below ground level? It's seven stories below. It's over 70 feet down. OK. And the museum is going to contain remnants of that day? Absolutely. It'll have lots of different artifacts, both monumental, big pieces of steel that were from the buildings down to very personal artifacts from the individuals that were lost. What is this down here? So what we see down here, these are the um, the, the authentic box beam column remnants of the tower, the original Twin Towers. So from here, the columns essentially went skyward all the way up to 110 stories. It doesn't get more real than seeing where the first building was built. Exactly, and I think that if you think about other archaeological sites and people think of, you know, Greece or Roman times, this is our this is our artifact of, of our time. Originally, this was going to be all covered with infrastructure. If you go back to the original designs right. that were chosen, the finalists, none of them went to bedrock. It's almost like it was going to be a race. It was going to be it a race. It was just going to be covered up. How vital, I mean, when you walk along here, it's a pretty big gap, about two and a half feet. As you walk along here, how vital as a historian was it to you to preserve this? Oh, it was everything, because it was a, it's, a tangible, it's a tangible connection to the event to the people who died. To the beginning. To the beginning of the to the beginning of the Trade Center, to you know the various parts of the story. At the end of the recovery, when rescue workers got down to this level, they used alkaline torches and they cut it up, cut off those remaining steel beams and carried them out. This is the last trace or scar of the Trade Center, the last imprint of the Trade Center towers that are on this earth. It, to me, it's a place of power. It's a place of of, of connection to history and my brother and one and a place of national pride and that's why we have to do everything we can 
to protect the integrity of, of this site. So this stairwell that we're, that we're talking about, the survivor stairs, is this where it was? Actually, the, the survivor stairs itself was on the plaza, and it was used as an escape route for hundreds on the day as the event was taking place. We felt ex it was extremely necessary to preserve this as an artifact to keep mm -hmm. it protected inside, and it will be the stairwell that people will see as they descend down to bedrock. So it's almost a parallel. It's a parallel. You're trying to make the point that that stairwell, which nobody thought would be extraordinary, in fact, became a bridge to safety for so many people. Exactly, and it represents the story of survival. And this slurry wall, this is really important. Absolutely, the, the slurry wall held, held back the Hudson, and if it had breached, the disaster, which was already horrible, so would have been that much worse. And walls take on, like other artifacts, lots of meaning over time. You right. think about the Western Wall in Jerusalem. This wall is incredibly strong and symbolic. Right. Um, it symbolizes the strength of this country um, during and after the events. And this is a, something that will be on display for all our right. visitors to see. So you've left pieces that represent strength and survival and ultimately hope. That's right, and I think those are messages that we want people, you know, 9-11, we saw the worst of humanity, but in the seconds after it happened, we started seeing the best of humanity, and these artifacts are going to speak to that side of the story.